Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday at Munce Library. Today, we're going to be talking about how to find company and industry data. So my name is Sarah Norrell. I am the business librarian. So if you do have any questions or, you know, have a specific company or industry you're looking at, you'd like some one-on-one -on -one assistance, feel free to reach out to me. Um, also, I do just want to point out we are doing our fantastic new workshop rewards program. So um, if you do attend workshops, you get to um, be entered into a drawing for prizes. So always great to um, attend whenever you are available. Um, so I'm going to share my screen so we can get started. Okay, so... The interesting thing about company and industry data is that it's available in many different places. Um, you know, depending on what you're looking at, if you're focusing on a specific company and how it is, um, uh, how it is inside that industry, or if you're looking to compare companies, or if you're looking to compare industries, even right, you're going to go about each one of those searches a little bit differently. Um, so we're going to start off doing company searches and finding that company data because um, I get those questions most often, right? And then the industry data or the industry questions usually come after the company searching um, because you want to collect that company data, but you also want to have that industry data so that you can see how that company is doing in relation to the entire industry. Um, so today we're going to be going over the um, SEC Edgar database. So when I say SEC, I mean the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. That is the website that you should see in front of you now, um, because this is a government-run database that you can search for um, company data that way. So we'll talk about that. Um, we are going to go into some library databases that as UT Tyler students, faculty, or staff, you all have access to. So within those databases, um, you have access to really in-depth company and industry overviews, profiles, analyses, all kinds of great material. Um, but that material is not available on just the open internet, right? And so you need that UT Tyler login to get kind of behind that paywall because these, um, these data sources are not freely available on the web. So um, hang tight and we're gonna do a bit of searching and just see where we go. So like I said, we're starting off with the SEC's website. Um, for anybody who's not familiar with that, it's just sec.gov. So sec.gov, so the Security and Exchange Commission.gov. Um, so because it has that .gov in the URL, we know that it is a safe and secure and reliable source. It is run by our United States government. So that's fantastic. We know that we can use um, any data that we find on this website with our sources, and we know that it's reputable. Now, um, for anybody who doesn't know, any public trading company is required to file with the SEC. Um, and so that's why they have this database of all this fantastic information and data uh, on these different companies. So the easiest way to go about searching, um, come over here to filings. Now, this website is really fantastic because there's multiple uh, links to get you kind of in the same place as far as the searching goes. Um, but they also have really great support materials. Um, so like how to search Edgar, which is the name of their database. Um, so, and then they also have about Edgar, which is really nice if you're looking for, you know, kind of the context to this database, how did it come about? What does it include? You know, things like that. Um, we're going to do two different things. We're gonna go to this Edgar search and access. And then we're also gonna look at this company filing search. Again, both of them will lead you to great resources and the same searching database. It's just two different ways of going about it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click on this Edgar search and access. So I click on here and let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Seems to be a little small on the screen. Um, okay, so 
Edgar Search and Access. This page kind of gives you a lot of um, different ways to access their database, different information about um, searching in their Edgar database. <clears throat> it also gives you, um, you know, different links to go directly into a specific type of search. If you wanted to look for um, a company's central index key number. Um, now I will say this number is unique to the SEC. They assign that number to every company that files with them. Um, and so you're not gonna see that CIK number um, in any other databases. It's just the SEC. Um, but it can be very useful if you know the um, CIK number for a specific company, then you can just put that into the Edgar search and go directly to that company. Um, so it's very, very direct. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're just going to use this very, very top link here that says Edgar full text search. Now, um, they recently... Uh, updated their website. So it um, looks a little fancier, maybe a little cleaner. It's been given a nice refresh, um, pulled it into 2022, if you will. Um, so if you're used to using the SEC website and things look totally different, don't panic. Um, they didn't get rid of anything. If anything, they added some nice new features to it. Okay. So again, like most databases, like the library website, we have just a plain search box here. You can enter in anything, right? They give you some options, keyword, ticker number, company name, their CIK number, or even an individual's name, right? So if you know like a CEO or you know somebody by name that you wanna look up, you can do it that way as well. Personally, what I like to do, I do more search options, which was just below that um, basic search box. And then I come in here and I can actually get a little bit more specific in my search, right? So let's say I'm looking for a company and I'm just gonna use Target as an example because who doesn't love Target, right? So we see that before I even hit search or enter, it kind of auto-populates with some different options. Now I know that I'm looking for the Target Corporation, this one right here at the very top. So I can go ahead and click on that. But if I wasn't quite sure what the full company's name was, this auto-populated list is very helpful because you can go and see, you know, what are the top suggestions that their results are going to give you. So let's say maybe I was actually looking for Target Hospitality Corporation. Um, so I could, you know, fill in the blanks that way. But we're just looking at the Target Corporation overall. And let me check the chat. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit search. So I said I was going to hit search, but then it's just not going to play along, I guess. Okay, bear with me a moment. I'm going to try and refresh this page. I apologize. I have never had to do this before. Okay. Let's try that one more time. Technology. <laughs> Isn't it great when it works? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Goodness. So here we have our results. They pop up at the bottom. Um, now we see that we've got 530 search results. What we can do is we can go over here to our filters, our filter column. Um, so we can look and say entity. So like I said, we know we're looking for that target corporation. Um, and so we can go ahead and click on that because we know that's exactly what we're looking for. If we weren't quite sure, we could still continue to browse through to determine exactly which um, company that we're looking for. But since we know automatically, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. 
Now that of course refines, doesn't look like it refined anything because we still have those 530 search results. However, um, what we are seeing is we're seeing all the lists of different reports or filings that this company has provided to the SEC. Um, and so we have the dates, um, we have the date that were filed. We have the entity or the person who filed. So John J. Mulligan with Target Corporation. Um, so we can go through and browse and see exactly what you know filing we wanted to look at if that was you know something that was interesting. Now, what I really love about this website is that um, you know if I were told I need to look up a 8K form at the SEC website, it would probably really take me a minute to kind of determine, okay, now what kind of report is that? What does that data contain? You know, things like that. What they do is they actually just in parentheses, they put exactly what these types of reports are. Um, so for someone like myself who isn't in these types of um, reports or data like every day, I can't always keep that straight or remember, they do provide that information to help you along, which is very helpful. Um, so if I wanted to look, let's say, at the most recent quarterly report, I'll go ahead and click on that. Now, it opens up just kind of in this little, you know, box in the window. So we can scroll through and we can see the entire filing right here. Now, that's, you know, one way to do it. We could open the document if we wanted to really dig deep into this document and see, you know, what's here. What do they include? What can I do with this data? Because it is a lot of financial data and it's, you know, for a small screen like this, it could get really confusing if you're not careful. So I do recommend doing that open document and it opens in an entirely new tab we have here. And so we can go through and we see, you know, the table of contents, which is interactive, which is very nice. So if we wanted to jump straight to the unaudited financial statements, we could click on that and it takes us directly to it. So all of that data is there for us to use. We can print out a copy of this. Um, you know, we can do whatever we need to do with this data. Now, let's say that instead, back on this page where we clicked on this document, we actually want to look at the filing of this document. So if I click on that, now you'll notice the um, interface kind of changes a little bit. Um, this actually took us back to the older version of the SEC website. So again, some of you may be very familiar with this view. Some of you may have never seen it before. Either way, don't panic. Same information, same tools are there, um, probably just in a different place than you're used to. So if we're looking, um, we see the actual filing for uh, the company for this most recent quarterly report. Also down here at the very bottom, we'll notice that um, we have the actual company information. So we see Target Corporation is the filer. We see their CIK number here. Um, and then State of Incorporation, which is Minnesota, um, so on and so forth. So we also have their business address and their mailing address. So we know 100% for sure this is the company that we're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. And I'm going to click out of this. So again, we're just here looking at those um, listings or those search results for Target. Now, if you remember when I was back at the SEC main homepage, and I use the filings drop down menu. Um, I said there are two different things we're going to focus on. So we've done that search and access where it gives you kind of uh, more options to really search around in all of their filings in that full Edgar database, right? It's not just a company search. You can actually search for different things like keywords, ticker numbers, um, if there's a particular uh, person associated with a company that you're interested in. You can do all of that searching in this Edgar search and access. If we wanted to look just specifically for a company, I recommend going to this company filing search. Okay, and so again, we see a very similar website to what we did earlier. Um, this right here, excuse me, is exactly what we want. Um, so again, I'm just going to use Target again, um, just to see, you know, make sure we get the same listings, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit search. 
And again, we get all kinds of different listings because target is a fairly common word, right? So what I'm actually going to do, um, you could, since we know it's target corp, we could add that back in our search, or since we found it right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, again, this is kind of in that, uh, the old SEC Edgar um, interface. Um, you can see all of the documents that they have filed with the SEC. You can see their filing date here. Um, any file number. So if that's something that you're kind of keeping track of, you can make note of that as you go along. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of items here. And again, we see that same, you know, company information. Now, if I go back more, I do more options. We have these, you know, different options for our search. So if we didn't know that Target was based out of Minnesota, you know, or if we wanted to just kind of look and say, I'd like to see a company, you know, based out of Texas, and maybe I kind of think I know the name of it, but I'm not entirely sure. These are good ways that you can kind of play around to determine exactly what you're looking for if you wanted to go this route. So. We could always do that, like I said. Now, again, this auto populates. I'm going to go ahead and click on Target Corp. Now, this is the new interface, right? So I understand that this can get very confusing. It is the same data, the same information. And that's why I wanted to do the same search multiple ways, because I don't want anybody panicking as the SEC website is still kind of transitioning to their brand new interface. But again, we see we've got company information here. If I click on that, it provides a drop down. All of that same, those same details, right, that we've already been looking at, mailing address, um, business address, you know, we've got former names and, you know, and all that kind of information. It's all there. We can hide that again if we want to. Now, what's really nice about this new interface is they categorize things, and so you're not having to look just at a very long list of all the different filing reports if you don't want to. Um, so personally, that's how I prefer it because I find the other just really long list a bit overwhelming. Um, so let's say we wanted to look at those annual reports. Their most recent um, annual report was published, or excuse me, filed in um, March of this year. So let's go ahead and click on that. So again, the whole file, the complete document opens up in a new tab and we can scroll through and we see again, table of contents. They're all interactive, just like um, the previous forms that we were looking at. Now, let's say I wanna go ahead and go right to our financial statements and supplementary data, all right? So I've clicked on that. It scrolled us through the page a bit. We can go in and if we wanted to look even more um, specific, let's say we want to look at those cash flows, right? Okay. So this, maybe this is what I'm looking for, right? For my research or um, if I'm doing any sort of report or something like that. Now we've really gotten to, um, you know, the meat and potatoes, if you will, of what that data is that I'm looking for. We see these financials over here. And what's nice is we see them compared to the past two years as well. Um, and so if I click actually on this number, a nice um, box pops up. They call it their attributes in the SEC um, Edgar database. You can also kind of think of these as like some basic notes associated with this financial um, uh, piece of data. So we're looking at the scale is in millions. We're measuring with US dollars, you know, things like that. Uh, it's also important to note that this little box has multiple tabs or pages, so um, you can actually click through and see a lot of really important data there, especially if you're looking for like accounting standards that are associated with this data or these financials, it's all here for you. So that's really nice, um, kind of interactive, if you will, which personally I find very nice. It's not just everything thrown at you in one long list, right? So. Any questions about the SEC filings um, or their new Edgar database design or interface that I can answer? Okay. I wanted to make sure and check the chat. 
Okay, so we've talked about um, those SEC filings, like I said, we would at the beginning. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually transition into library related databases or um, library provided databases, sorry. Um, so I'm going to just get rid of a few tabs here. Get it cleaned up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this website as well. Uh, in case you're not familiar, this is the library's homepage. Um, so since we are going to be going directly into databases that are going to help us find this company and industry information, I'm going to go ahead and click on our databases by title. Okay, and so this is simply an alphabetized list of all of the databases that the library subscribes to. I don't expect anybody to, you know, have memorized the names of the databases that you think are going to be most helpful for you in your assignment or your class or your research. Um, but what I do recommend is actually using this drop down menu here. And instead of just looking at all subjects, which is just the entire list of databases, I recommend going down to business because that's what we're looking for, or that's, you know, the area that this is related to. And then here we have a list and my contact information, but here we have a list of, you know, really great databases to start with in case you're not really sure um, with your business research. Now, specifically for that company and industry data, we're going to be focusing on just a couple of these databases. So we are going to be um, searching in business market research collection right here. Um, we'll also do a search in business source complete. And we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in market line. Now, you can also find company um, profiles and company data in Nexus Uni. Um, that's not the first place that I would look though. So we're not going to focus on that database today. If you do have any questions about using Nexus Uni for company information, please reach out and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on business market research collection first. So this database is owned by ProQuest. So anybody who's familiar using ProQuest databases, you'll recognize that the interface looks just like every other ProQuest database does, right? So um, they have their basic search box here. What I'm gonna recommend is that we go up here to advanced search. So that automatically gives us multiple search boxes. But what I wanna draw your attention to is this option down here for company or organization, okay? So I'm just gonna continue using Target. It's worked well for us so far. Um, so let's just see where we go. Um, if I do target corporation, we already know that that's, you know, kind of how it's been listed. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit search. Found zero results. Okay. Maybe it doesn't like corp in there for corporation. So we'll just go ahead and do target and hit the search button. Okay. So we see we've got six results. Um, published anywhere between October of 2020 and October of this year. Um, so if I look and I see, okay, we have target receivables, on target supplies and logistics, target marketing group. The word target is very popular in business names. Now let's check out this target group limited. Okay, so what this is gonna do, it's going to open up um, the company report that we have, or excuse me, that the database has on this company. So um, some maybe faculty, or if you're uh, used to using databases from another library, you may recognize the DMV for Dun & Bradstreet's. Um, and this is a report by Hoover's. Um, so it looks like, again, this is not the same company that we're actually looking for, right? This is Target House out of the UK. Um, we're looking for Target Corporation out of Minnesota. Um, and so that being said, I'm just gonna go ahead and back right out of this because we know it's not what we're looking for. Now, based on this, I'm not actually seeing our company listed here in uh, this database. So the thing about searching in our databases is that sometimes they have exactly what you need, sometimes they don't. And what I always recommend to anybody who's looking for that company and data, excuse me, that company and industry data is don't stop at just one database, right? 
If we're going over multiple databases today, go ahead and search all of them for that company or that industry data, because even if you find data in each one of the databases that we're going over today, um, they might overlap in some sections and not in others. So you may find pertinent data about, you know, one type of filing from the SEC, but you may not find that in library databases. You may find SWOT analysis on that company in a library database, but you're not going to find that in the SEC filings or another library database. So really, they're all meant to be used in conjunction with one another. So since Business market research collection is not being our friend right now. I'm actually going to close this tab and I'm going to come over here and let's do a business source complete search on Target. Okay. Um, you know what? I meant to open that in a new tab. Excuse me. Okay. So Business Source Complete is a really, really big um, database focusing on all aspects of business. Um, so don't be surprised if we get a lot of results. Some things to kind of know about the um, geography of Business Source Complete, if you will. These are their you know, search boxes, just like any database is going to offer. You have tons and tons of ways to filter or be specific about your search down below those search boxes. If you want to, you don't have to do that. Um, so down here, they do actually have a box for the company or entity name. They also have a box for the ticker symbol, if that is something that you have on hand. And they also have one for those NIX codes or that industry code. So um, those NIX codes are more for industry data and industry research. Um, those are provided by the Census Bureau. Um, so that is just kind of something to keep in mind, much like we found those, um, those uh, CYK numbers in the SEC. It's just a direct way that you can access um, certain reports or data um, about a certain entity. The other thing to notice about Business Source Complete up here at the top, we have company information right off the top. So it just takes you directly to the company search. And then over here in the right, we actually have company profiles, company information, and industry profiles, as well as market research reports. So we're not going to go over each one of those today, but I do want to draw your attention to them because they are definitely worthwhile if you have a company in mind or if you have an industry in mind and you are doing that kind of research, please be sure to play around and do some um, searching. Thank you, Nelson, so much for your time. Um, so definitely take a look at those and, um, you know, explore to see what we have available. I'm going to go ahead and do this link for company information up at the top, just because it's the most direct way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click tar or type in target. I hit search. Okay, so we get a full long list again of all of the companies that they have um, in the database that have target in the name. Now, of course, by relevance, Target Corporation comes up at the very top. And we know it's the correct company um, because we see it is based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Perfect. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. So here we get just kind of a basic overview of Target Corporation. Now, um, we see, we know we're in the right place again because we see that same company information there. Um, we do see their revenue posted here. Now, if we look down, they have basic company data, right? Those basic financials, nothing as in-depth as we've seen on the SEC website so far. Um, we do have executives listed, so we have basic data. Um, industry listed, so we have that next code. We also have those SIC codes, which again can be very important when we're doing that industry research. And there may be a little bit more, yep, founded in 1902. Um, et cetera, et cetera. It's not a subsidiary. Important information, definitely, but maybe not as in-depth as we really need. So um, you can request from another library, but the problem with that in this database is you're not really requesting anything that's not already listed. 
So again, what I recommend is let's go to market line, our final database for the day and really dig in and see what they have to say and provide for us on target. So I'm going to click out of that. And again, market line right here. Market line always takes a minute to kind of load, um, but I think it's just because it's such a big database with a lot of interactive tools. So be patient with it. Um, okay, so market line is a huge database. Again, this is going to be the primary recommendation that I will always have for those company and industry questions if you're going to be looking um, using a library database. Um, and the reason why is because the uh, amount of data, the breadth of data, just how granular they are, um, and the different ways that they analyze company and industry data that's already out there, it's really fantastic. Um, it always blows my mind what I find in here, and I've never had a student be disappointed with what they find for their assignments here. So we have many different ways that we can access the same information or the same search here in MarketLine. Um, of course, like all databases, we have just our basic search up here. Now we have a drop down menu. We can say specifically we're looking for an industry profile or if we want to look for a company profile, et cetera, et cetera, company news, you know, things like that. If we didn't want to be that specific or we just kind of wanted to browse or, you know, something like that. Um, you can browse by company. So these are all buttons across here that'll take you to, you know, a new page. So you could browse by company, browse by sector. So they take industries and they break them into 19 core sectors. And then within that sector, you can narrow down specifically to what you're looking for. If you're looking for um, maybe an industry in a specific geographic location like North America or Asia, you can do it that way. Um, if you wanted to just kind of look and see what is really making waves in a specific geographic area, you can do it that way as well. Um, and then we have different, um, again, just more ways to look at the same data. I encourage everybody to always kind of just play around in market line a little bit, um, because like I said, I'm always surprised at the new information and data that I always find in this database. The other way that we can access, like the third way that we can access the same information, up here at the very top, we have some buttons and drop down menus. Sometimes this is what I use because personally I find it to be the most direct um, way to access this information. If I'm not really looking to browse, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'll come right up here, say to companies, and I'll just go ahead and click on that. So here we have, it just auto populates with the data that they have on specific companies. And if you'll notice, they um, uh, list them by uh, the number of employees and their annual revenue. So Walmart is at the top, quickly followed by Amazon, right? <clears throat> Now, what's really neat is that um, MarketLine is very good about being international in scope. Now, sometimes you'll have uh, research assignments that you want to look for maybe publicly traded companies just within a specific state. You can certainly do it that way as well. Um, but MarketLine really prides itself on the amount of international business data that it does collect. So we have this list, but let's say we still want to follow up on target. So I just type in the word target, it auto populates again, which is very helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and click target corporation here. Make sure you hit the search button. So here we have target corporation. It's the first one that comes up. We know it's based out of the US, so that's perfect. I am gonna just go ahead and click on that. So this takes us to the market line um, profile on the target corporation. So, um, Market line has a very pretty interface, right? Lots of nice colors. Here you have a company summary, those key statistics, a lot of the same data points that we've been seeing everywhere, right? Um, that are ticker symbol, the address, um, you know, the website, basic things like that. Um, you can scroll down, and this is just kind of a snapshot of some of the highlights that people normally go to these company profiles for. We have research reports, um, deals, those most recent deals that the company has made, and that SWOT analysis. Now, 
before we get too excited and we go like maybe directly to that SWOT analysis, I do want to draw your attention over here to the navigation pane on the left. So we're here at the overview. I am going to move the little zoom box for a moment because I do want to point out you can export a section of their report or you can export the entire report on this company either to a Word document or to a PDF. Um, and so that's really going to come into play later as we look through this profile. So again, we're just here in the overview. We want to get dig into the profile here. So we see we've got business segments, products and services, company statement, corporate strategy, key locations and subsidiaries, key employees, and the history of the company itself. Um, so that's very, very important data, definitely something um, more detailed than we've gotten so far. Now, if we just look at like business segments here, right? Again, we can export this section as a PDF or a Word document. Now, each of these graphs and visuals that you see in MarketLine is interactive. So you can click on any of these, you can hover over them. They encourage you to download these graphics. Um, and of course, just make sure that you cite your sources. You don't wanna just claim that you've created this yourself. Um, but you can download it as different types of files, save it to your um, device or computer, you can print it, things like that. They want their data to be shareable and usable in the best way possible. So they make, you know, many different options for you. They encourage you to utilize these um, graphics and data points and things like reports or presentations or posters or things like that. Of course, just always cite your sources. And if you have any questions about that, please contact me. So again, you know, we have these different um, graphics here, and this is just for business segments. So it goes on and on. We have products and services. Target has a lot of their own brands. Um, so we see that there. Company statement, um, corporate strategy, all of those pieces that we saw right here, we're just seeing them listed down in the profile itself. If we wanted to go to the next section and look at news, so we could see um, what's the most recent news that's coming out about the company itself. Um, so this was, let's see, today is the 19th, so only five days away, uh, five days ago. Um, so online shopping to start accepting SNAP payment options. And we see that all the way down. I mean, we can go pretty far. There's 821 results for news. So if you want to go way back and look at news for the target company, you can certainly do that. Now, what also is very important, especially when you start incorporating that industry data, is to look to see what peer companies um, are associated with the company that you're researching, right? So where's the biggest competition? Um, so obviously we see Walmart and Amazon. We see a bunch of other ones too. Some of them that I find a little bit surprising, like Lowe's companies um, and uh, you know things like Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Um, we also see some different like pharmacies and things like that. But what's really cool is they show you all of the revenue employees and the market cap associated with each one of those peer companies. So you can do that, um, you know, compare and contrast right here on the page. You don't have to go back and forth to all these different companies, um, individual profiles in order to do this uh, peer analysis. Next, we're looking at research reports. I'm telling you, technology today, it just does not like us. Let's try that one more time. Nope. Okay. Research reports are very nice. Um, I'm sorry that I can't show them today, but um, they are really, uh, it's another useful tool to kind of analyze that company in a different way, right? If you want to look past those financial, you know, data points and look to see how is the company really influencing the field, the industry, the geography, the state, or the country, um, research reports um, are really good for that. So let's try to look at deals. There we go, okay. I have to hold my breath for a minute. Um, so deals is really nice if you're looking to see, you know, how um, the, the company is interacting with other companies, um, you know, and things like that. If we wanna look at M&A, so um, mergers and acquisitions, venturing, you know, we see partnerships, ownerships, things like that. Now, it is really neat because you can compare companies. So if you wanted to, um, compare 
says you can click and, uh, excuse me, click up to four companies that you want to compare. So let's say we want to click Amazon and Walmart. Okay. Update. So now we see all of these, you know, these three companies compared to one another. We see Target here, Amazon, and then Walmart. And that is their, you know, international or deal, excuse me, deal activity by country. Um, so again, this is all interactive. You can um, download or export these um, interactive graphs. It's just, again, it's another way to look at that company that you may not have thought of before, or if you have thought of it, but you didn't think you could really do it all in one place, Market Line has you covered. Um, so that is the uh, company comparison. And then again, if you just wanted to look at that M&A value uh, and uh, activity and things like that. So Target has definitely been pretty active as far as uh, mergers and acquisitions, not necessarily Amazon or Walmart. Interesting to see. Um, so those are uh, the deals. Now, everybody's favorite, the SWOT analysis, right? I have more students come to me for SWOT analyses for different companies, and I'm all about it. I think that's fantastic. Market Line does a great job of putting it all together for you. Again, it is interactive. You can export it or download it, print it, save it to your device, save it to, you know, a presentation that you have, and it goes through it gives you the actual analysis, or excuse me, the uh, SWOT grid at the top, and then it gives you, um, you know, more information down at the bottom as you go along for each section or each point. So very important, uh, very popular SWOT analyses. So there's that. So we've pretty much gone through the target company profile, that company snapshot. Market line, like I said, has a ton of really great data on companies. Now, I'm going to stop for a second because we're about to transition into like industry data and things like that. So I just want to ask if anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns. All right. If you think of anything, shout it out or drop it into the chat. No problem. Um, so like I said, uh, market line breaks up industry information into 19 major sectors. And again, these are international in scope. Um, and so if we wanted to browse by sector, we could certainly do that. If we wanted to come up here and just kind of look at the sectors that they already have, those kind of overarching broad sector categories. So <clears throat> if I wanted to look at maybe consumer goods, retail and food service, and then I wanted to, oh, sorry, and then I wanted to go and do retail, wholesale, and food service specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then it takes us to a list of industry profiles and other things that have to do with that sector. So Market Line is really great about having these industry profiles, but they also have a lot more than that based on that sector. So we do see industry profiles here, and there's 556 of them in that list. We can always go through that narrow it down, find exactly what we're looking for. We have old archived industry profiles, so you can compare how the industry, you know, a specific industry or even a geographic location was 10 years ago to what it is now. If you want to kind of capture that analysis and growth or decline. Um, we do have thematic analyses, so things like, um, you know, coronavirus is a really big one right now. You'll see a lot of those. And we do have case studies. Now, those case studies really kind of come into play more for um, uh, faculty who are teaching. They like to use these case studies as examples and assignments. Um, and we have an archive of case studies. Value and supply chain analysis, industry data, it goes on and on. Um, chart books, things like that. So I'm not going to dig into every single um, you know, section of the industry or the sector analysis that MarketLine has. If I did, it would have to be a whole extra workshop. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take us back up here to those industry profiles. So over here, let's say we know exactly that we want to look at those industry profiles. 
So what I've done is I've actually gone over here to the left and I've clicked content type. Okay, and so let's say, I'm gonna scroll down and find industry profiles in the list. I'm gonna click on that. And let's say that we actually wanna look specifically at industry profiles in the US, okay? So I went back over here to the left, clicked on geography. Now we see North America is listed. I could just click all of North America, but if I wanna be more specific, I can click that little arrow and it uh, you know, expands the drop-down menu. So we have the United States. Now let's show results, 18 different results. So what we can do is we can come over here and say, view all industry profiles, okay? So we have things like organic food, luxury goods, online retail, things like that. Again, this is just within one subsector of um, all of MarketLine's data, which is why we're only seeing 18 industry profiles. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on online retail. Market line always takes a minute to load, so don't panic if you're working on it at home or on campus somewhere and it takes a minute. So what's really neat about um, these industry profiles, you have the option to view them just as a PDF right here, or let's say you really liked the company profile um, interface where it was interactive, you could download specific graphs. So you can actually click on this option up here that says view online. And we'll start at the executive summary. Give it a minute to load. Okay, there we go. So we see the executive summary of online retail in the US. And it's important to make note, this was published in October, late October of 2021. So it's about time for it to be updated. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. MarketLine is really good. Their company is really good about constantly updating their data points and their reports. So if you are um, looking for something a bit more up to date, I recommend contacting them or reaching out to me and we can work um, and see what else we can find. But they're usually one of my go-to resources as far as the most recent and up-to-date data points and reports. So we have that executive summary. Let's look at maybe that market data. It's loading. There we go. So, all right, again, we can take this data in this table, we can put it into a Word document or a PDF very easily. Um, online retail sector value in the billions. So we see that from 2019 to 2020, it took a big jump. Now that's not surprising considering uh, starting in 2019 and definitely well into 2020, we were dealing with a worldwide pandemic, which means that online retail was really the number one retail option. So no surprise there that it took a major um, leap. We see that. Um, if we wanna look another popular, almost as popular as the um, SWOT analyses, those five forces analyses. Um, <clears throat> so we have a nice summary here, and then we get into some really nice looking um, interactive uh, graphs, uh, charts, excuse me. So we can you know, spend time, I really like these because a lot of students come and they're like, man, this would be great if I could just put it right into my PowerPoint presentation. Well, you can. Um, so you can, you know, extract it to Word or PDF. You can copy it over, you know, things like that. Um, so that five forces analysis is very, very popular. What's also super popular and very important to look at when you're looking at industry data is that competitive landscape. You want to know uh, what your biggest competitors are as far as your industry goes or a specific company. So they tell you here, like the leading players right now, Amazon, Walmart, Apple, none of those are surprising to me. And then the Home Depot, that surprises me. But, you know, we talk, uh, excuse me, they talk about, you know, why, uh, how they are the leading um, players in the field. And then they go into different things like main business models in the market, strategies, what makes those leading players those leading players, um, main challengers, um, and the rationale for recent mergers and acquisitions. So that's just specific to this industry profile, um, but each one is going to be unique. And then the last thing that we'll look at is the macroeconomic indicators.
So if you're looking at, you know, the large picture, the big picture, you're looking at, you know, US GDP and inflation. Um, I know that inflation is a huge um, talking point and rightfully so right now, right? So again, this data is from about a year ago. I would look, you know, to see, make sure that you're looking at the most recent data possible. Um, and again, check with me if you are not happy with that data that you're finding and we'll keep looking. So the last thing over here related to this report, we have analyses. So they do have some options down here if you want to look at related analyses. Companies, right? So we're going to see things obviously like eBay, Home Depot, there's Target, Apple, Amazon, Walmart. So those big players, um, deals, and news. So these are all clickable links um, and you can go in and just kind of explore. Um, Personally, I find that market line is really great if you kind of find yourself um, falling down the rabbit hole of like an industry or company analysis, things like that. Be surprised just how much um, information and kind of that overarching picture you can gather just by spending some time in market line. So any questions um, about what was presented today? There was a lot of information I know. Okay, um, well, I'm not hearing any uh, questions come through. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, if nobody else has any questions, I would just say, you know, make sure to uh, uh, check in with the link that my colleague Christine dropped into the chat um, because we are doing our workshop rewards program. So by entering in, you can um, potentially be drawn for a prize. Um, so if there's no other questions, just want to give one more second. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for attending. I hope that uh, this was helpful. Again, if you have any specific questions or you'd like that one-on-one -on -one support for company or industry data, please don't reach out. My name is Sarah Norrell, the business librarian here, and I'm always happy to help. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.